Hello everybody, this is the second part of my two-part video series on oxidation reduction or redox reactions. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to use oxidation states to track the progress of redox reactions, figure out which elements are oxidized, which elements are reduced in the event of a redox reaction. So my last video, which was the part one of the uh, oxidation reduction reaction series, um, we talked about a few things. So uh, what did we talk about? We talked about the definitions of oxidation and reduction. Uh, we gave an example of a redox reaction. Um, then for the rest of the video, we talked about oxidation states. We talked about what they are, so the definition of an oxidation state. Uh, and then we talked about the rules for how to assign oxidation states to elements as they exist in either pure elements, monoatomic ions, polyatomic ions, uh, molecules, or even formula units. So if you have little to no knowledge of redox or oxidation states or anything like that, well then I highly recommend that you click that blue underlined link up there and that will take you to uh, part one of this two-part video series. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into an example. So this example tells us to use oxidation states to identify the element that un undergoes oxidation and the element that undergoes reduction in the following redox reaction. So we have hydrogen and oxygen coming together to form water. So let's start with the reactants, hydrogen and oxygen. Recall that any element, any free element, is always going to have an oxidation state of zero. For, so for both the reactants, the pure hydrogen and the pure oxygen, both of these are going to have oxidation states of zero. So it's very, very simple for the reactants. And if we turn our attention to the product, we have water, H2O, and what's going to help us figure out the oxidation states of these two elements is by referring to the table uh, that talks about how to assign oxidation states for nonmetals. And again, the way to correctly interpret this table is to start with entries that are high up in the table and then work your way down if necessary. So we're going to assign an oxidation state of plus one for hydrogen because of the two elements that are in water, hydrogen is higher up on the table than oxygen. So we're going to go back to the problem. We're going to, uh, we're going to assign an oxidation state of plus one to the hydrogen atom. And then we can use the rule, I think it was rule three of the oxidation states rules, uh, which says that the sum of the oxidation states in any molecule is always going to be zero. So the, the uh, implication there is that if we have two times the oxidation state of hydrogen, which is plus one, and we add that to one times the oxidation state of oxygen, then that result has to be zero. Uh, subtracting this equation, uh, both sides of it by two is gonna give that the oxidation state of the oxygen is minus two. So we have just determined the oxidation states uh, for both elements, both on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the, uh, of the chemical equation. And now what we can do is we can figure out which one undergoes oxidation and which one undergoes reduction. Remember, oxidation is the gain, or excuse me, oxidation is the loss of electrons. So if something is increasing in oxidation state, that means that it is uh, becoming oxidized. So notice that in the case of hydrogen, hydrogen goes from an oxidation state of zero to an oxidation state of plus one. Therefore, hydrogen is the stuff that's actually undergoing oxidation. Uh, also notice that uh, for oxygen, we're going from zero to minus two, and uh, that corresponds to reduction. So the oxygen is undergoing reduction, the hydrogen is, is, uh, is undergoing oxidation. Furthermore, since hydrogen is undergoing oxidation, that would be our reducing agent, and oxygen is undergoing reduction, reduction so therefore oxygen is uh, the oxidizing agent. So that example was pretty, uh, pretty easy. Let's move on to one that's just a little bit more difficult before we wrap things up. So this one, it's the same directions. We're gonna try to figure out what's being oxidized, what's being reduced using oxidation states. So we have the combustion of octane. We have C8H18, that's octane. We're burning that in pure oxygen and the products are CO2 and water. So one of the reactants is very easy, the oxygen, because it's a free element. So we know that oxygen, uh, as it exists in pure oxygen, is going to have an oxidation state of zero. For the octane, it's not so easy. Well, the hydrogen, like we saw a moment ago, uh, that's going to have an oxida uh, oxidation state of plus one. And then we're going to use rule number three again, where the sum of the oxidation states has to equal zero in this neutral molecule. So the implication there is that eight times the oxidation state of carbon plus 18 
times the oxidation state of hydrogen plus one is going to equal zero. If we subtract both sides of this equation by 18, we will get that eight times the oxidation state of carbon must equal 18. And then finally, we can divide both sides of this equation by eight. And we're gonna get that the oxidation state of carbon is 18 over eight, which reduces down to negative nine fourths. So negative nine fourths is therefore the oxidation state of the carbon atom in octane. So it's apparent now that oxidation states do not have to be whole numbers, they can be fractions, and uh, they often are in many cases. So that takes care of our reactants. Well, if we uh, go ahead and turn our attention to the products, well for the water it's very easy, we just figured out how to do that. We know from the previous example that the oxidation states of hydrogen and oxygen in water are plus one and minus two respectively, so that doesn't change. It's always going to be the same as long as we have water. And now we can turn our attention to CO2. Well, if we go back to our table here, we can figure out the oxidation state of one of these two elements, and then we can solve for the other. So it says that the oxidation state of oxygen is gonna be minus two, okay? So if we uh, refer back to the, uh, the problem here, the oxidation state of that oxygen atom is gonna be minus two. Since this is a neutral molecule, the sum of all these oxidation states has to equal zero. So one times the oxidation state of carbon plus two times the oxidation state of oxygen, which is minus two, is gonna be equal to zero. Uh, if we add four to both sides of this equation, that gives us our oxidation state of carbon, uh, which is going to be plus four. So we have just determined the oxidation states for all of the elements in all of uh, in, in both the reactants and the products of this equation. And now we can figure out which one increases its oxidation state and becomes oxidized, which one decreases in oxidation state and, be and becomes reduced. Well, it looks like the carbon going from negative nine fourths to positive four, that's definitely gonna be oxidation because it's going from small to large. So the carbon is being oxidized in this case. Uh, look at the hydrogen. Hydrogen goes from plus one to plus one, so it's not changing. So therefore, hydrogen is neither undergoing oxidation nor undergoing reduction. So its oxidation state is unchanged. But if we take a look at the oxygen, just like the last example, it's going from an oxidation state of zero to minus two. So since its oxidation state is decreasing, that means that oxygen is undergoing reduction. So we just figured out that carbon is being oxidized oxygen is being reduced, therefore the carbon is the reducing agent and the oxygen is the oxidizing agent. Once again, oxygen is a very, very common oxidizing agent. So most of the time, oxi uh, oxygen will be your oxidizing agent. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you found it somewhat helpful. Uh, the last video was pretty long, so if you've sat through that, thank you very much. Um, I was going to add this part to the last video, but I thought it would just run way too long, so that's why I decided to split it up into two parts. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, in the next unit, we're going to be talking about gases, so um, can't wait for you to join me for that one. All right, have a good one.